This video is about custom primitive data in Unreal Engine 4 materials. This feature is new in Unreal Engine 4.23. So what is custom primitive data? It's a feature that allows you to store data in primitives that is used in materials. You could do the same thing with dynamic material instances. The difference with a custom primitive data material versus a dynamic material instance is that you don't create new material instances, and that allows the Unreal Rendering System to do the same amount of drawing with fewer draw calls. So how do we use custom primitive data? First, we set the data on a primitive component using a set custom primitive data float or vector function. The next thing we do is get the data using a parameter node and a material. That parameter node needs to have the custom primitive data checkbox set and also the index that it's reading from. Rather than using parameter names like dynamic material instances do, you actually use just indexes from zero to the number of parameters you have minus one. In this example, I'm going to show you how to create a material that uses custom primitive data by creating a material that has a random color on it for each object that goes into the scene. And we're going to set that in the construction script in a blueprint. After we do that, I'm going to do the same thing using a dynamic material instance, which is the technique that you would use before you had custom primitive data. Then I'll compare the draw calls between the two methods. So first we'll create the material for the custom primitive data method. Then we'll create our blueprint actor for that. And let's open the material up. And we're going to drop down a vector parameter that's going to be our color. Now I've named it color, that's mostly for documentation purposes, um, because the parameter name doesn't matter with custom primitive data. What matters is the primitive data index, um, which needs to match up with the call you make in the blueprint, which you'll see in a moment. The other thing you need to do is make sure to check use custom primitive data right here. Okay. Now, these indexes, uh, one for each of the vector components, 0, 1, 2, and 3, need to match up, as I said before, to the values you set in the blueprint. If you had more than one vector, and say you wanted the sec second one to be a normal, you would need to use a different primitive data index. So if I have 0, 1, 2, and 3 for my color, I'd probably want 4, 5, and six for my normal. So I'd need to start at four here. Now you can see the indexes don't overlap anymore. But for this example, I do not need that. So we're just gonna leave color. Now we're going to open up the blueprint and we're going to create um, a sphere. And we're going to drag this new material we made onto it. Now let's go to the construction script and generate some colors for this. So I'm gonna call random float three times so I can get a random RGB and these nodes generate a float between zero and one, which is what I need. I'm gonna make a vector. So here's my random RGB. And now I need to set it on the sphere on it, uh, its custom primitive data. So on the sphere, call set custom primitive data. And in our case, we want to do a vector three. And here's the data index I was telling you about. If it's not at zero, you need to change this. Ours is at zero. Hit compile. And Let's drag it into the scene. So you can see as I move it around and the construction script runs, I'm getting a new color that's randomly generated. If I duplicate this, each one's getting its own color. So these purples happen to be the same, but if you move them around, you can see they're independent. Okay, now let's go do the same thing using dynamic material instances, which is what we would do before the 423 feature was available. So I'll create a material, call it M Dynmat. Create a blueprint class actor called BP Dynmat. 
open up our material, create a new parameter called color. This time I will not check use custom primitive data because I'm not using that. Drop a sphere down. Um, go to the construction script. We're going to call create dynamic material instance, and we're going to use this new dynamic material we just made. Now on that instance, we're going to say set parameter set vector parameter, it's called color. Again, we're gonna make the random color value using random float. And now we need to set that material, that new dynamic material instance we just made onto the sphere. Compile and save. Now let's drag in that version. And you can see it's doing the same thing. So I move it around, the construction script runs, and I get a random color generated. If I make duplicates, you can see they're all independent. All right, great. So how do they compare? Let's delete all these from the scene so we can get our baseline. What we're going to use is the stat scene rendering command. And under counters, you can see mesh draw calls. And it's showing nine. Now, um, that's actually more than it's using right now for if I was playing the game because there's a bunch of other geometry that the editor's generating, like this icon right here, um, this little XYZ axis in the bottom left-hand corner. And I could press G to kind of get rid of some of it, but just to keep my tests more sane, I'll just do play an editor and then observe it there, so from one spot. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add, just to make sure I'm observing it from the same spot every time, I'm going to add a start, a player start right here and just have it looking down at the scene. And then when I play an editor, I'll use default player start. So there I get the same view every time. Okay, so let's lay down some dynamic materials first. So here's one. Oh, actually I forgot to look and see what the baseline was. So let's hit play. So the baseline right now is five, All right? So let's drag in one dynamic material instance, blueprint, and I'm at nine mesh draw calls. All right, let's duplicate this, hit play again. Now I'm at 11 mesh draw calls. Let's duplicate this again, hit play. I'm at 12. Duplicate this again. Hit play. Now I'm at 13. You can see where this is going. Do it one more time. Now I'm at 14. So as I'm adding them, the first time it seemed like there was two added, but generally like every one you add, you're getting an extra draw call. So let's delete all those again. Hit play so we can see our baseline, which is five. Now let's do the same thing with the custom primitive data. So here's the first one. Play. So I'm at 10. Duplicate. 10. Duplicate. Still at 10. You can see where this is going. You can keep making more and more and more and more and I'm still only gonna have 10 draw calls. 